Hello and welcome back to Warns of the Force, a Star Wars podcast. It is myself, George, and tonight I'm joined by Dave and our absentee, Phil. I almost said the wrong word. I almost said your name again. My bad. Um, That's okay. We are tonight with a brand new episode, and we have a very busy episode. Um, for those that live under a rock, it's the Star Wars season. Um, it really is. In a week's time, episode one will be... Episode two will just about to be out for Mandalorian. Yep. There'll be a Star Wars game. There'll be a new Star Wars book. In five weeks' time and six days, we'd have already seen episode nine. Yes, we will. So we are in the long run. We're in the home stretch, the final stretch, and we have a show for you. How are we tonight? Really good, actually, mate. It's uh, We're coming to a day late because it was bonfire night here in the UK last night, Guy Fawkes night, 5th of November. So to be honest, even if we've been live now, all you would hear, it would sound like bombs going off all around us. So there was very little point in doing a show. Plus, I have a four-year-old son who wanted to do fireworks. So, yeah. But no, it's good. I'm glad to be back and talking some Star Wars and quite a lot of Star Wars to talk about. I think this is maybe one of our busiest episodes that's not special in a long time. I want to yeah, say. it is. Poor um, Phil. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, Phil's probably sat there like, they've got the long episode without me. He's probably fuming. He's listening to this as he flies to, is it Sweden he's gone to? It's Sweden. I think he said he'd landed, I think we saw earlier. So he's there in Sweden. Uh, which would be nice to get an international listener, even though it's Phil. <laughs> but it's still nice. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. Which, how should we take this? Should we go over the news first? So we're going to go over the news. And we're going to begin with The Mandalorian. We're going to use this to formally introduce our new show we're going to be doing on Saturday. Is it evenings UK time, we said? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to go sort of Saturday evening time. I think it's going to be best for it. Yeah. Which will be like lunchtime for any American listeners, I guess, lunchtime morning. So we're going to do a weekly Mandalorian video. We haven't decided if this is going to be a breakdown, what it is, but we're going to do a video per episode. Obviously, it begins on Tuesday, four days away. That's so exciting, actually. <laughs> Five days away. Um, so we're going to hopefully get something out, I'm guessing Tuesday or Wednesday. We haven't determined it yet. Obviously, we're all going to be flying to America and back for these trips. Yes, that, that's exactly as we're planning our flights is why we haven't got when the show's going to air yet. <laughs> so um, that's that's a big one, not a jet lag there. So we'll be covering that for yourselves. We're very, very excited by this show. Just a um, touch. This is going to be special, and you know, it's just the beginning of one of the busiest weeks of Star Wars. Um, so we wanted to introduce with that. We're looking forward to it. We've still got so many other shows. We've got Resistance which I'm up to date with, which is as good as it's going to get. Um, <laughs> well, I don't mean like that as in I'm actually <laughs> up, to date. I'm up to date with Canon, and this is where Phil gives me his 800 comic books. Um, yes, I was going to say, he's going to send them through individually week by week. I wouldn't mind it, to be fair. I, I did used to, I know this is off the record, but when when Marvel Star Wars began, these I want to say the first, I want to say four or five months, I got all the Star Wars runs, yeah, I got the the Leia series. Was it a Leia series, a Lando series? Uh, the one set bang on after Episode Six, before yeah. Episode Seven. That was it before before the the Awakening. The like time one they did. Oh, yeah, got, like, variant covers. Um, I read. I was really on the nose with all. I was loving it, and then there was suddenly like four, five, six different ones happening at the same time, and I massively went out of track. I read a couple of them. Yeah. Um, and I would like to revisit them. And then we've got Phil, who sat here like, I've got the entire five-year collection. <laughs> he really and I like The day I get to his, I'm just going to sit there, just like scanning through them. Um, it, and I'm just amazed. Keep up with that. It's amazing that he's got all those issues. I mean, that's a massive pile of comic books. Just the mm -hmm. amount of lines that came out to keep up and have them all. It's quite an incredible thing. That's quite a collection. Even the Chewbacca one, which was one of the reasons I stopped. Um, <laughs> I thought I got that issue one. Didn't and I'm what I will pick up though. I guess this is our Star Wars for tonight. Forget the news. There's no other Star Wars but this. Um, the Kylo Ren comic that's going to start the yes. day Force Force Awakens, the day Rise of Skywalker comes out. I will be getting that. We will be watching Star Wars, and I will nip to Forbidden Planet in the morning and grab myself a copy that I am intrigued by. Um, obviously, we can discuss all of this a lot nearer the time. But going back to Saturdays, yes, uh, Mandalorian, our new series, show, coverage, all of it. Yeah, I think it's going to be really excellent to have, again, like we have with Resistance, where we have a show every week uh, just about the show, so don't have to fill up this 
regular episode with things about resistance things about mandalorian because if we had them both if you think both those series running by the time we got through those episodes alone we'd have like two minutes left for the rest of the news so we do like to kind of spend this time going over what's happening in the star wars world all around so it's nice to now have these breakaway shows definitely and um what's gonna come of this mandalorian we over the last two weeks have had a couple of well we've had one new official trailer and we've had an absurd amount of TV spots, and so it begins. Um, I'm going to shout out first, you and Phil's trailer uh, breakdown. Have a look of that. Now, I was asleep, and I I messaged both of you. Phil messaged me like, there's going to be a trailer tonight, and I put, this one I cannot afford to stay away yeah. from. Um, so I woke up, at, I think I woke up at like half one in the morning. And um, I saw like loads of messages. I did, I say I woke up. I didn't watch. I like you know when you just yeah, yeah. just kind of looked at your phone and went, Ugh, and put it down and went back to sleep. It was like, like notifications. I was like, okay, that means there's Star Wars stuff. Then I went straight back to sleep. Yeah. So I saw it first thing in the morning. Um, so check that video. That was good fun. That was good to listen to. Again, very exciting. We're all excited. And then we had a lot of TV spots, which I want to say is given more information away than the trailers. Um, yeah, it's it's classic Star Wars, really. We kind of get these trailers that kind of try to hide the plot back a bit and hide a few characters, keep things back. And then in the lead up, in the last few minutes, it's like, and now here's most of the information you're going to find out in the first episode. We did get some cool things out of it. We got to learn that uh, Nick Nolte, his character is the voice of the Ugnaught. That is alongside the Mandalorian, which I thought was cool. Uh, so there are some really nice shots of this uh, proper scout trooper on a speeder bike going across a desert as well was awesome to see that. So there have been some really nice shots, but I'm trying to stay away now as much as I can from the TV spots because, as I say, they do give too much away in the lead-up to the first episode. And they're all... I saw one today. It was like in five days' time. So they're clearly doing one a day. And obviously, we know Disney Plus launches on Tuesday around the whole world because, of course, we can all watch it. Um, so that's happening. And then they introduce us to Ming-Na Wen's character. Um, she's going to be playing an assassin uh, called the most... Fennec Shand. It's a very Star Warsy name, but I mean, if someone said to me that was Ming Na Wen, I wouldn't have known. I think if you are looking at our live feed, we do have a picture of her character, and she is not made up like massively differently. But you're right; she doesn't quite look like herself. She looks a million miles away from her Agents of Shield character, um, so it's really nice to see that. Yeah, and that that's what's exciting. It's new characters. It's new lore. It is the first, not to insult the comics. This is and Battlefront 2, the first bit of canon set after episode 6 and before episode 7, which is the era that not we all want to explore, but certainly when episode 9 is done and dusted, that is the era that Disney will, I think, really go for comics, books, games, everything. I think that's going to be the era in which it does begin to get dominated. But um, what I'm going to do uh, with this one... I'm going to talk a little bit more about Mandalorian. So you mentioned we have Nick Nolte. Um, his Ugnaught looks ex sound, looks not just obviously what it sounds like him because it is him, but the Ugnaught looks like Nick Nolte. And this is something that has kind of disturbed me more than anything else. I'm going to take the range for a couple of moments, folks. But Nick Nolte is a very, very good actor. If anyone hasn't seen him in any of his other stuff, he's a legend and... An Ugnor is the most random role. Pitching an actor like that, do you want to play this, you know, little thing that was in a 1980s Empire Strikes Back? It was there for a minute, but you're going to be a lead character. And all you're going to do is do the voice. But the prosthetics are what really makes it. It kind of looks really funny in an, an, an ironic way. And that's not an insult. That's like a, what's the word? That's, that's not a criticism at all. It's, I love it. it it's great. I'm excited. And, this is the thing exploring this canon between episode six and seven, the Mandalorian, the galaxy, you know, Oh, is it better? That's the question mark from this. Has the galaxy got better? We're going to find out. We're going to go into the bounty hunters, the most, un. what's the word? The most not undiscovered, but we don't really know a lot of them. Canon wise, the public don't know a lot about bounty hunters canon wise. So to bring in the ability to have all of these bounty hunters, how they collect their bounty, seeing, um carbonite collecting their winnings it's stuff that's not really been explored fully so i think that's what really has drawn me to the mandalorian and seeing all these new characters is just going to add so much more to that i just i can't wait i'm so excited for this to happen so excited to see the start apparently there's 
there's rumors on the internet there's quite a big revelation coming in episode one so i'd hope that doesn't get spoiled before we get a chance to see it there's always a chance these things are going to sneak out but i think from when it releases basically off the end, until we get to america on our plane rides and can watch the mandalorian and then fly back i'm hoping the revelation not to just you know jump the gun i'm happy for any revelation as long as oh you're not boba fett you know um, i don't think it will be that i don't think that they're going to go down that route they could but yeah. episode one i think any form of revelation would be tied into the original trilogy to a capacity it could be anything from not a tie fight yeah. but it just it could be anything and i'm just excited i mean we've got gus from breaking bad as the villain I think they'll probably slowly build up to him. There's just so much going its way. And, you know, we're in the we're in the sandbox of Dave Filoni and John Favreau. And that's something that, again, that's, that's I'm not just excited for this show because it's Star Wars. I'm excited for this show because the creative team they have from the producers, the writers, the directors, to the cast, to the effects, the groundbreaking stuff, getting John Nolan, I and I'm not back in as well. Everything going towards this is going to be monumental for the future. When we spoke about Rogue One many years ago, it was, this is a big test because this is a Star Wars spin-off. This, you know, I think this is even riskier a TV show because Disney's entire streaming service is, right now is backbone on the Mandalorian. Not Marvel. They've only, they've only just started filming this week for their first show. This is done and dusted and season two has already started filming. Disney Plus at the minute comes down to this. No one cares about Lady and the Tramp. Much <laughs> like Jeff Goldblum show is going to be amazing. Yes, you, can't sell, you can't sell your site service on that. Mandalorian is going to be one of the most pivotal shows in Disney's history. And it's going to be incredible. It's just everything I've seen so far points us in the direction that this is going to be great. There's nothing I've seen that goes, that's a bit iffy with what they're doing there. It all looks superb. It's why I'm so excited. I'm, I mean, Rise of Skywalker is up there for how excited I am to see this movie. Mandalorian, I'm saying it's not far below that by any stretch. No, I'm I'm with you on that. Speaking oh. of looking for excitements for Star Wars, some of the best news I've last for night is that they have finally binned Benioff and Weiss. And the header says, oh, winter is not coming. It's celebration time. Um, for those that, you know, this was, what, two days after our last episode, I think, this came out? Oh, yeah. Um, it was announced that Ben from Weiss would not be um, producing Star Wars shows anymore. Official reasons are that they've signed their $250 million Netflix deal and need to focus on that. They don't trust them to juggle them. I'm not going to sit here and give a personal rant about Game of Thrones. I think season eight was disappointing. I think the first four seasons are the finest four seasons of telly I've ever seen, but the consistency didn't finish it. And they were two people that when they got announced for Star Wars, I was very excited. I think a lot of people were very excited. There could have been so much they could have done. Yeah. And what killed it for me, and I kept the optimism, even about season eight of Game of Thrones, they cut that series short because they wanted to work on Star Wars. Mm. The irony. Um, there was a film festival. I don't know where, but those two came out of nowhere for a, su a surprise q and I don't know if I sent this to you and Phil. Um, I, I've actually seen you hadn't, but I had seen it on Twitter and things. People, yeah, were, it's, it's, really, it's it's really. But I reckon at this point they know that they're not doing Star Wars because oh, it definitely. was literally announced like the day after. But they essentially came out and said, "Oh, season one, we didn't even think we'd get it turned into a TV series. We didn't do our pitch as well. It came down to George R. Martin and writing our scripts. The characters we didn't know who to cast. We went on fan websites to get a lot of the big actors in. We were looking at fan forums." This, this, that, and it's it was not negative. I don't want to say it was negative because it was, but it was it was almost like a not a reluctance, but they it's almost as if they were just gonna like listen, we we know what's happened. That that it just felt like that, like head down, let's just let's just do this now. And I read the entire forum and I think I messaged you some people like, no, these guys need to be off Star Wars now. I'm not having this. Because it just showed that. You know, they could have sat there, took all the praise for seasons one to four, which rightfully they gave it to George R. Martin. It's his baby, and he did help co-write those, but that is not who I want doing a Star Wars trilogy. There is another man who I want doing a Star Wars trilogy, who should be doing a Star Wars trilogy, who keeps reminding us he's doing a Star Wars trilogy, <laughs> who we will talk about very soon, to the upsetness of some people. But I want to know, because you're not a Game of Thrones fan, so this is going to make it interesting, actually. 
Yeah, I'll just put it out there one more time just because I like when people see the reaction and they go, oh, one of those people. I've never seen Game of Thrones. Not an episode. I've seen four or five minutes here and there when it's been on different shows, like clips and things like that. I've never seen an episode. I'm one of those guys. Sorry. You get to be stuck now because it turned out that you didn't waste your time. <laughs> I feel really great about it, yeah. Apparently, Series 8, was uh, I was not missing anything in the build-up. I could just watch that one and be, yeah, fine. But um, I read the article and the transcription of what had gone down, and it, to be honest, it seemed more unprofessional than anything. Like, yeah, we were, had this massive show, this massive budget, and we didn't really know how to work it. And it was like, oh, that's that's not what you want to hear. And I know there were people who were fans of Game of Thrones were in uproar because of the way they came across to how they'd handled the whole thing. Like, yeah, we did this, we got this off forums, we saw this, so we did that. Just a bizarre way to talk about the series. I know they were probably a little bit had the backups with how the last series had gone and the reactions to it, but to come out and say that, I think, was a step maybe too much. And then what did they say that as the actors grew, they just wrote the roles around the actors? more. So, which I, I understand that there is a... I understand that the way sort of TV and film works is you sometimes you'll start on a project, you will have a, a young actor, Harry Potter's, they might get better as it develops. That did happen with some of the Game of Thrones cast. You might get something like The Force Awakens where you cast an Adam Driver who's done a couple of years of comedy TV series, has been in a couple of films, not in big roles, and four years later, by the time you get to episode nine, he's... Oscar nominated, about to be Oscar nominated again, could win the Oscar, is by far the best thing about the trilogy because I think what Star Wars did, I know this is kind of off topic, but they not the character was always there. He was the son of Han Solo and Leia. He was going to be the Skywalker of this trilogy. I think this is his trilogy by the time he gets in of nine still. But, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh yeah, he got he was incredible acting. They they got lucky or they built around him but certainly i don't think jd got the episode on the script and thought adam is one of the most talented guys we've got in a contract i'm gonna do this yeah oh i know this is me kind of wafting but that can happen you can take an actor and you can build stuff around him if you look at his performance certainly in last jedi he's a very intimidating actor and when i'm intimidating he can start a sentence calm and he ends the sentence five words later screaming blow that piece of junk scream out of the sky not many people could deliver something as sim simple yet not funny but powerful intimidating he, he can have a mixture of emotions and again not that star wars got lucky it proved perfectly cast this guy adam drive you're right it has grown so much as an actor in the time he's been on these movies but i think that was always in him i mean he went to juilliard for goodness sake he didn't just fall into acting uh juilliard is such an acclaimed place and He's been there. I don't know if you've seen his TED talk that he does about. I Marines saw. And... Is that the twenty-minute one? I think it was his TED yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, and you know, he's the main thing is his background. As we say sometimes he's his back. I mean, it is acting, but he wasn't the young actor. Red carpets, cameras following him for years. Even when he was filming Girls, uh, yeah. I've never actually seen it. But I didn't know he got nominated for like back-to-back -back Emmys in supporting roles. And you know, again, even then the cameras went on him. Does Force Awakens? At this point, the camera is still on him. Then he gets the last other. He gets unmasked as Kylo Ren. He kills Han Solo. The cameras are on him. Yeah. And it must be hard because every interview I've seen, he's very nervous. It's not, he's no Harrison Ford of anger, I'm fed up. <laughs> I've seen him on red carpets. He's, he's happy with his fans. He avoids autograph dealers. He avoids the press. He's a, And from what I've heard from set, he's a very nice guy, when, when not when you get to know him, because again, that sounds weird, but. Apparently on set, like he's he has he had like a table tennis, and he'd always invite people like between takes and on days and days off and whatnot. Apparently it's really cool, but because he's so nervous, it's about getting into that shell. And even seeing him doing press for Last Jedi two years ago, compared to how he's been promoting Marriage Story in his films recently, mm. it feels like five ten years ago, and it must be hard. I mean, for, I mean, Carrie, Mark, and Harrison have all said this before that they were nobodies, and then literally overnight the entire world is on them that must be hard and when you bring in a military background of you know very i mean i can't sit there and say i've got experience of it but a very different environment for yeah. so many years it must be even harder to adapt to 
and that's why I love the fact he's in something like Star Wars. And the character, you know, his military background does bring out the best in Kylo Ren. Episode seven, he's intimidating the way he walks, his kind of closed fists walking by his side. I, I know we're meant to be talking Game of Thrones, but I'm glad <laughs> better than that. Eh, um, we're fine. We're fine. We said enough. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's one of them where, you know, I'm happy they're gone. I was willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, but what they did that I can you imagine if your Netflix is like highest, you know, their CEO, you've just given these guys a $250 million contract. And they've turned around and says, Oh, we didn't expect anything we did to get green lighted. Yeah. And Netflix just green it like five, 10 years worth of films and telly from those two blokes. See, it's got to be a worrying stat for them when they see this come out to think we've given these guys so much money and put so much backing behind them. And they don't really seem to know where they're going to go with that. And, one thing it must be quite scary for Netflix because of the likes of Disney Plus have just start uh, Disney Plus is about to start Apple uh, Apple TV plus, Apple TV Plus and yeah that's so, just started has so. just started as well and they've got some really great shows as well the morning show I've I've been watching on there and that's a really good show as well so they're starting out strong as well and producing their own movies and things so Netflix are about to get a lot more competition than they've been used to for a long time in the streaming platforms yes Amazon was there but. It's not really a competition thing with Amazon. I think uh, Netflix have a much stronger uh, streaming service than Amazon do currently. So I think they've got a lot of trepidation, than, and they should have with what's coming. No, no, definitely spot on. And I think as well, you know, you got Kathleen Kennedy on the most experienced producers of the last day, four years. Not just experienced, sorry, one of the most successful. Forget that big word as well. You know, she sees these guys, and she's not dumb. She's probably, you know. She probably wasn't. What I love about Kevin Kennedy, I, I apologize, I can't say who tweeted this. The one of the best tweets I saw was Kathleen Kennedy is willing to give, who certainly showed she's willing to give a chance. These people are clearly delivering a pitch, they're clearly impressing her with said pitch, and she's giving them the money to prove not to prove the pitch right, but you know, I want you in, you are hired, you are doing yeah. this. The biggest thing about it is Kathleen Kennedy is also not afraid. To see it's not working. Oh yeah, Solo, three quarters of fruit. Game over. Out. Done. This hasn't worked. Done. Bring in Ron Howard. Rogue One, my favorite of the new Disney era. Mm-hmm. You know there were big reshoots. It wasn't a case of Ben and Gareth Edwards. He did all the press. Yeah, he yeah. Everything. He's in very good grounds with Disney. I'm sure there's a cut somewhere in the world. Um, but you just know that. Kathleen Kennedy probably sat down and said, listen, the tone's not right. They said that from day one. She's, you know, she did not get where she is by being polite. And yeah. if she let Phil Lord, the people come out, oh, they, oh, Soda got ruined by Phil Lord and Miller. Maybe their film would have come out. It could have been one of the worst things. And she'd still get criticized for doing it. Yeah. I remember Celebration 2017, when she introduced Ryan Johnson, she said he was the best storyteller since Steven Spielberg. That's a high compliment. Yeah. Very high. And, you know, Knives Out's incredible. Loop is incredible. He directed Breaking Bad's best episodes. He's an incredible filmmaker, and he better have his trilogy to replace Weiss and Benoff because, again, she's not afraid to get rid. No, you know, absolutely. Benoff and Weiss, they 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 probably did interview soon. Oh yeah, we pitched Star Wars, but we probably sat down to the logistics and raising the work. And there's rumors that I know this is jumping off point. I think he says, but the rumors are that. They were going to do a trilogy about the origins of the Jedi. Now, yes. rumors are rumors that I would, did not want that from them. I that would have felt very not Game of Thronesy, but it just felt a bit too. I couldn't picture those guys doing the Force as a concept. So, like Ryan Johnson, I absolutely could. I can imagine yeah. him. I mean, he delved into it in Last Jedi. You know, with Yoda, he had some great scenes. Looked into the Force and whatnot. I couldn't have pictured the Game of Thrones guys doing that because they used to just getting everything given to them from a book. And yeah. um, they couldn't even do that right. Yeah, it's um I think that you're right. The logical choice is to put uh, Johnson's trilogy in. And I mean, to be honest, we might as well we're still might as well jump ahead to the story we're covering it quite a bit now. Um Ryan Johnson has come out again and is still doing Star Wars. And you see it still because he's having to seem to confirm it every other week. Everything he does, are you still doing Star Wars? Yes, I'm still doing Star Wars. Until we hear from Kathleen Kennedy herself that he's not doing Star Wars, he's doing Star Wars. He's just finished Knives Out. Yeah. He's, he's now got an empty schedule. Now, cast your minds back to 2017. Colin Trevorrow is sacked from Star Wars. Ryan Johnson sends a tweet out the week before. 
I would do anything to do another Star Wars film. You know, JJ got Star Wars 9 because Ryan has a trilogy planned. And we know that that trilogy was given to him way before Trevorrow was binned. And he's, like I said, Kathleen Kenny's praised him. He's proved it. Take away episode eight. His other films and content, as I mentioned already, is great. Knives Out is definitely a film worth everyone seeing when that does get a reason. I think this is the only sad thing about not Star Wars, but when someone related to Star Wars, I'm actually going to jump onto another news point. Whenever this one is involved with Star Wars doing press for any anything else that's not Star Wars, that's the only thing people talk about. Yeah, you know, Ryan Johnson's promoting Knives Out. Are you doing a Star Wars trilogy? I think the first time he said, "If I am," and then the second one, everyone was like, "Oh my god, he's not doing it." And then the yeah. next one was, "Did I say if? I mean, I am doing it." And then the third time this week, I'm still doing it. It's it's one of those where you know he's a good laugh on Twitter. He's a very good director. And even doing press, he did the entire red carpet at the Knives Out premiere in England. And then he did as many fans as he did until they made him to go inside. He's a humble guy. And the other thing is, he's a fan. That's yeah. the big thing. And he is someone that I can trust with that franchise moving forward. And he's going to take risks that other people aren't afraid to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why he's still one of the best picks for a full trilogy of Star Wars movies, picking his own time scale, his own time in the, the story of Star Wars, his own area of the universe. I can't wait for this guy to get started again. Definitely. Now, I did a little bit of a mini segue, so let's switch the route again. I was talking about people that keep having to promote Star Wars when they're not actually promoting Star Wars. We've had the curious case of Ewan McGregor for the last four years. Actually, I say four years. He's been asked every interview since like 2012, since Disney bought Star Wars, are you playing Obi-Wan Kenobi? <laughs> and he has officially come out while promoting Doctor Sleep, which I do not recommend. He <laughs> out to say that I think it was on um, not either Jimmy Kimmel or Conan, one of those kind of shows, the talk shows, and yeah. they asked him obviously that he they genuinely just spoke about Star Wars for like ten minutes. It was it's great, it's worth watching, and I think it was Conan. And they said, "What was it like? How did you know?" And he you know I've known for four years, Conan. He's there like, um, "I've come here on this sofa. You've asked me every time. I've had to lie to your face every time <laughs> to say I'm not doing it." He goes, I'm, "I was not sick and fed." He goes, "I just had to keep saying I would love to." He goes, "Yeah." I came across as this desperate bloke who was just looking for a job because <laughs> I had this job for four years. And, it, you know, when you go back to Force Awakens, the day he replaced James Arnold Taylor's Obi-Wan voice cameo was probably the day he signed up to replay Obi-Wan Kenobi. You would have thought so. He signed him up, chucked him in a room. Hey, do you mind quickly saying these are your first steps? There you go. He's one of them where it's just exciting. And he's looked so, I mean, he always looked happy anyway. But I genuinely feel he seems happier now he can talk about it. He seems a lot better with his fans compared to years ago as well. He's spoken so much more about the prequels, the green of George Lucas, kind of not saying I was wrong, but he's you know kind of said that you know I, I see where the vision went. I understand it now, and I didn't back then. Mm. And I'm just excited for him. I'm very excited. Currently, he's got a very good beard growing too. He said, I think it was on one of the talks she was talking about, he was talking about the beard and said it, was, it wasn't the ready, wasn't the Kenobi beard. He was just getting practice in for making sure it looked okay still. And uh, just, uh, it's just, yeah, you're right. It looks like a weight's been lifted that he can now actually talk about the subject and talk freely and openly about it. Obviously, he probably doesn't know much more than the initial outline he's probably read of said scripts that have been written. I mean, Kathleen Kennedy said the scripts were done. So he's probably, he probably has read them all, to be honest. That's probably a total lie as well. But I'm so happy that he's getting to talk about it and to look like he's loving being Obi-Wan Kenobi again. I think he can't wait to get his lightsaber back and get his cloak back on. Exactly. It's it's a very fun time to be a fan of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Star Wars. So, moving on, we're going to actually go back to what we were meant to move on to ages ago, where <laughs> I, uh, I over-segued into talking about Adam Driver. Um, Omaze, if you haven't don't know who they are, episode, Omaze are a charitable company that they do promotions for charity, uh, they always bring in actors. There's always you can win like a prize, uh, holidays, meet and greets. It's that kind of, and it's you can always have one free entry. But if you want to win, you always have to donate money. It goes to charity. So I think they originally began with episode seven when they had someone on set, didn't they? This was the, one of the yeah, boats. it was JJ walking across, and he walked literally until he, the full size X wing was behind him. And yes. one of the first shots we had of that. Yeah, and. Um, 
they've promoted each of the Star Wars main films, and there was nothing about being an episode nine set, which was not like them. They kept it that quiet. And it came out that for the premiere, we randomly got a really cool video of Adam Driver, which I believe you have on the screen, which you're going to play. I, I do. I think we'll just play it because it's it's such a great video that Adam's put out there. And again, this is advertising for Amaze. What I didn't say is you win a prize. So there's, sorry, before we put Adam's video on, there are currently four competitions, but it looks like there's more coming each week. So you win a flight and hotel to the world premiere of episode nine in America. Uh, if you have Adam Driver, you win a signed cross guard lightsaber by him. I assume a prop one, not a cheap one. Um, you also walk the red carpet with him, get a photo and get invited to the uh, the after party. And Daisy Ridley is doing one where you just get to meet her and do the red carpet and go in. Wouldn't put me into that one. Mark Hamill, you go out for a meal with Mark Hamill and then you go to the premiere. Now that would be incredible. Yes, it would. Greg Grunberg, who many people think who? He's Snap Wexley. And yep. you're about to put money in for him because you get to walk the red carpet with him and our good friend Claude, the new giant yellow slug. I'm sure there's going to be some more. Um, they'll probably, I wouldn't be surprised if there's an Oscar Isaac one or an Anthony Daniels one or, you know, yeah. I can imagine we'll keep doing it. But if you want to enter, go on amaze.com and the Star Wars is all over their front page. But please don't vote oh, yeah. on the Adam Drive one because I'd like to win that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do not go on the Adam Drive one. Yeah, George is very much hoping that will be him and Adam Driver together. But yeah, I was going to play Adam Driver's video because it is excellent. So I'm just going to bring that up. We'll actually play that now because it's, it's just superb. Everyone should watch this. I'm Adam Driver, and I'll keep this simple. To support Arts and the Armed Forces, I'm teaming up with Omaze to give you the chance to join me at the L.A. premiere of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. You'll see the new movie before anyone else. You'll get tickets to the private after party, and you'll even get a chance to walk the red carpet. Now, if this is your first red carpet and you're worried about what to wear, don't be. I'm here for you. Not a lot of people know this about me, but I'm something of a red carpet trailblazer. I live to push the boundaries of fashion. Here are some red carpet looks that you can use at home. This is a black suit. So much to say, it's a black suit. This is a blue suit. As you can see, it's blue all over. Here's me in a suit looking very playful. Oh, was that that premiere? On the verge of a full smile. This is my most controversial look. Hope you're not watching this on a work computer. <laughs> Class. Oh, and for this one, I just throw out the belt. Very comfortable, but greasy. <laughs> Awkward publicly, comfortable personally. So now that you're feeling inspired, go to omaze.com slash Adam and enter for your chance to meet me at the red carpet premiere of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. I'll even hook you up with the perfect red carpet accessory, a cross card lightsaber autographed by me. But the best part of it all is every donation supports Arts in the Armed Forces. It's a nonprofit I co-founded with a mission to bring high quality arts programming to active duty service members, veterans, military support staff, and their families to around the world. Once again, that's omaze.com slash Adam. Go there, donate. And I hope to see you soon. I mean, what a guy. I think that's just so good for what he's doing, that he's putting this out. And it's for a thing, his own charity as well, which I think is even better that we're getting that as well. It's it's a great price. So again, as I said, over to omaze.com forward slash Adam and donate to enter into the competition. And it's a great competition. Why wouldn't you want to do that? And if I win, there's a second ticket for someone. <laughs> I will fight Phil to the death. I was going to. <laughs> I can imagine like getting like a message off him at the airport, like we're about to go, and he'd be like, "What about the video, guys?" <laughs> we had an episode. Guilty. Oh, but no, it, it's worth entering. It, you know, it's a nice competition. I like things like that, and you know, if you don't win, at least you've given it to a good cause and yeah. whatnot. So, but if you win, sign cross guard, meet Adam Driver, fight Adam Driver, Destiny. That's what that is. But anyway, um, that's almost all the news. We've got two more little bits. I know we've gone quite a while. Um, one of them, like Disney Plus, we haven't talked about already. We're flying to America next week to watch Mazarin. Yes, we are. UK release date is rumoured for March. So a bit of a random one. So BBC launched their streaming, streaming service that no one's going to pay for today. Um, and on, on the news article, they put Disney Plus is expected in March 2020. Now, they, I think they've put that to advertise their own streaming service, which is stupid because 
people will just read Disney Plus is coming in March. Yeah. Join Brit. Is it BritBox? It might know. be, to be honest. It's very early days. I was not really aware of BBC's streaming service. So, hey. <laughs> M and ITV have teamed up together, and it's like a monthly paid streaming service. But for Americans, I think it's already over there, and it's a bit of a big thing. Right. In England, we've got the iPlayer, which is free, so it's pointless. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's one of them. So we've still got no date. Bob Iger still not confirmed it. He was put on the spot. He still didn't answer. No. The day they do announce it, Mandalorian will have probably already had three seasons. So It really will. I mean, it is crazy that we're not going to get a definite Disney Plus until after Mandalorian is finished. To be honest, Clone Wars may have even started before we get it over here to get Disney Plus. So as I say, we'll be taking lots of plane journeys so we can watch the episodes and bring them to you on our new Saturday show uh, starting from next week. Definitely. And our final bit of news for the week. Adidas have finally launched their Star Wars collection, arguably one of the most disappointing collections in history. You can, If you're listening to an audio, we're saving you your viewing displeasure. <laughs> you know what we're looking at, the awful Adidas shoes. Now, what's the most amazing thing about these is that they all look tacky, they all look disgusting. But in England, they've only launched like one of them, and it's not even on this photo. England has an Obi-Wan Kenobi shoe, yeah. and it's grey. And in Orabesh in light blue, it just says Kenobi. And even that, which is a simple sell to 99% of the public, normally, if, if it had looked nice, I'd have already had that by now. It'd be in my hand. Yeah. I don't because I looked at it, it's just a grey trainer with blue Orabesh on. Very disappointed by what Adidas could have done with the Star Wars range. Yeah. This big reunion they hyped up. It's very disappointing. The shoes they did last time they had the team up with Adidas were so much nicer. There's some really nice plain white stormtrooper shoes that just had literally a stormtrooper on the back of it and around the sole. And then they had some really nice Luke ones, which are like a, just had a little bit of blue and it had his, his X-Wing helmet design in it. So some really simple plain shoes, like they had the gazelles, but in obviously Chewy and other people. So there were nice colors on there as well. But this time they've kind of gone out with their, you know, the big kind of new trainers, like big base basketball boots. And it's just... For, I mean, for me, maybe it's a, a younger man's game, but uh, <laughs> I just I just can't get away with them. No, not I don't think many people get with any of these. Um, I can't imagine many people wearing them. I be like, you imagine going to celebration, everyone wears posers. I don't, and the old Adidas shoes. I can't imagine seeing many of these or yeah. people in a rush to buy them too. Um, but that's the kind of the main news. Um, yeah. We're gonna. There's no Star Wars this week. We've kind of already discussed comics, so we had a little sneak peek there. Um, when Phil will return, we will. I mean, Resistance Reborn's out, but does that really count as news? Because we knew it was coming. Um, yeah, we talked about it. I think we talked about it as well before because it's got Wedge on there, so I think we've covered yeah, it. Yeah, we've covered it. So um, that's out now. There we go. Star Lords, goodbye. <laughs> um, what we're all here for is Toy Shelf. Now, this has gone quiet since Force Friday. Everything kind of came out, and then it stopped, and it's now re-ramped up. Um, so I'm going to go first off for Black Series news, I guess we could say. In no celebration of any anniversary for Episode 2, they've gone and released loads of Episode 2 Black Series figures. Um, they're releasing Kit Fisto, Plo Koon, Obi-Wan, Anakin, Geonosis Droid, and the Lord and Saviour, Count Dooku. Now, this really surprised me because we know there hasn't been enough prequels. We know that they did, obviously, the 20th anniversary figures for Episode 1 this year. And they dipped in. They did what the the battle droid, Mace Windu. They were slowly dipping into the prequels, but yeah. we kind of had what might as well be the 20th anniversary of episode two wave, literally just announced in front of us. Um, how do you think these will look? Uh, I hope they look like they do on some of these uh, shots they put out. Obviously, they do put these beautiful shots of the figures out. Uh, if you were watching the live stream or you watch the video, you can see what they look like. Um, the only one I'm a bit to point with is. Count Dooku doesn't quite look Christopher Lee enough on my account. But what I do love, and what I must say is amazing, there's two. The Kid Fisto is incredible, looks superb. And what we I've did we've had in our live chat when we chat before we these episodes is if you have a look at the difference between the original release of Obi-Wan Kenobi in the same outfit compared it to the face mold that they've got on this one with the digital print on there, it's not even like it's in the same toy line. It is incredible the work that digital paint the paint is doing on this figure. And that's the thing, and what was scary enough was that episode three Obi-Wan looked like one of the better figures at the time of release. Yeah. 
and that's how far they've come now. And I don't, I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't like the look of Anakin too much for episode mm. two. This looks something a bit odd, but um, I mean, they the episode three one was one of I think the rarest ones they did. They recently re released them, didn't they? Yeah, so there's no need to do that again. And it is nice to see the prequels get a bit more love. I don't yeah, know, definitely, when, definitely. I mean, there's still no Jar Jar Binks, <laughs> yeah. What, what to me, what this means is that. They're slowing down on the original trilogy figures. Yeah. Which they've, let's be honest, they've been done to death. As I've said this so many times, they're as great as they are, you know, there's only so many of the same person you can buy. But getting these, you know, it took us this long to get Camp Dooku. Yeah, I you know, know that. It's nuts that it's taken this long to get to some of these prequel characters. I mean, I think prequels were definitely shied away from towards certainly the start of the, when the Black Series started and they didn't really discuss, but now they've had this sort of renaissance where everyone's about the prequels again and talking about what they loved because that generation now is the people who are going out and buying the figures like yourself, George. Yes. So they are now releasing these figures, which is a much better way of doing it. Now they've got this audience back who loved the prequels when they came out, who were big fans. So they're going to be buying these. And I think, yes, you're absolutely right. We have missed out on a lot of figures that they could have released. And I think we will see a big way, a big slew of figures that are going to come out with Revenge of the Sith, obviously, when that comes around as well, I think you see more from there. So I think it's only good for the collection. And I think we're going to get a lot more Clone Wars probably too. I mean, definitely. Plo Koon, you know, without Clone Wars, they would not have done a Plo Koon figure, I don't think. Oh, absolutely. Not, not this minute in time. So, and also the sculptures. I mean, Black Series Strength was originally, I think, the aliens and the droids. Yeah. Not droids, sorry, the ar armor troopers. Yeah, yeah. Seeing some of these, you know, c-list character i mean not to sound nasty i love play queen and kit fister but film wise yeah they aren't a-listers they're not supporting cast they're the background ones that you love and that's a fundamental part of star wars fandom is having that you know we might even get coleman treeball figure <laughs> one of the incredible things we could so it's exciting seeing he's getting their due um but yeah. what we also do for it does come with these is there is a new Star Wars one coming out and they've already released a bit of the merch we do have an upcoming reveal of the Zori Bliss and a, another Knight of Ren in Black Series form. These were announced at Comic Con as well. It's hard to get a grasp of what they look like because they both got vintage figures um, yeah. on Force Friday. So it's kind of like a juxtaposition. Everyone that got a vintage figure is now getting their Black Series, and everyone that had their Black Series is now about to get another vintage figure. So they're kind of just switching the releases around. But I read a scary statement by Hasbro claiming they've only released 30% of their percent on merchandise on Force Friday. Yeah, it's crazy that there's so much kind of being held back. And I think you're right. Now they've got this sort of, let's see, again, the digital paint that they have. I think it's very easy for them now to take the what they're doing a Black Series and bring that down to the vintage collection and vice versa. We've got this character face. We've got it perfect. Let's just roll it out on this card as well. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Speaking of vintage collection, we have another wave announced, all Mandalorian related. So we have the Mandalorian himself, played by Pedro Pascal. We have Cara Dune, and we also have what they're calling the Remnant Stormtrooper. So basically, like the seventh, ninth different version of a Stormtrooper they've done <laughs> for the vintage collection. But this one's set during the Mandalorian. I think he's got a different colored scuff on his boots. Yeah, what, one more. He's got a bit different, different kind of sand. In his in his side of his boots, you can't even see it, but it's in there. Yeah, it's just. I mean, uh, vintage series is one that I've. I mean, I've said this many times. This channel, when they launched, relaunched them, that was going to be. This is it. This is what I'm going to collect from now on. This is going to mm -hmm. be my Star Wars collection. We've got wave one, got wave two, got wave three, and then it's like now we're just re-releasing loads of old figures from the Kenner days, which is fine. But vintage series, vintage collection is meant to be about the modern films that yeah. done work like that and you know we're going to do four waves a year turn into that eight seven eight eight waves a year three vehicles a year and as much as i enjoyed them you just couldn't keep track of them um which is a shame i mean don't get me wrong i'd love to you know if you had unlimited money but of course you could buy them all but it's just one of those but it just didn't work out same yeah. pop. i've got stricter i've got three black series figures and four black series figures in total got my mandalorian <laughs> got my episode one anniversary figures and my star celebration 2016 so i think i'm going to stick with the ones that are sentimental yeah i think the funnest way of collecting them um well as so i'll do a shout out to our top black series figures which we did a video for yes we did if you want to go back and check that out it's in our playlist inside of our youtube page no issues so 
moving on uh in the next up we have re-releases of a couple of vintage collection clone wars figures i'm guessing this is in anticipation for the release of the new series they're re-releasing vintage clone wars anakin obi-wan and more now i never knew that these were even vintage yeah. figures anyway i didn't know about vintage back then when this show aired and it's one of them again where i thought oh that's kind of cool they're doing it and then you realize oh it's just a re-release from seven years ago just to put it back in the mass market and it will look better than when they originally released but yeah it is just again it's a repackage so yeah it's it's again the that line unfortunately is not something that's in my something i buy at the moment so that's it's not really in my uh wheelhouse at all so i'm not really interested in that one but yeah they are coming there are club Wars figures and you're right they will be in line with the new series and as well they've also given us a very random release of some new force fx lightsabers we have kit fisto and asajj ventress now i disagree with both of these being released massively disagree with both of these being released they re they have the cheats release a curved lightsaber and it's not count dooku's i feel the same way about that but especially since ventress has been released before uh, she was in the earlier when they did the yeah when they did the initial um, master replicas or the first time they released Force Effects, whichever way it was, they had this lightsaber before. So when they were releasing the curved handled lightsaber, especially since they're releasing the Black Series, the the Dooku figure, you would think logically Black Series Dooku figure, of course, was wanting a Black Series replica of his lightsaber. It's a shame because they. The lightsabers are a weird one because I think when they relaunched them, it was a bit of a question mark over the quality and not availability of them, but it was one of them. And I think because of Galaxy's Edge, because we've got these leg, the, what, what are they calling them? A legacy lightsaber? Legacy, legacy, yeah, uh, legacy sabers. And, um, you know, I think Asajj Ventress is there, Ahsoka's there, but Kit Fisto, like, I love Kit Fisto, like, he's a great meme. Yeah. You warrant having a light, I've never even seen the lightsaber till this came out. It's, yeah, it's a very plain... I think the only time I saw the lightsaber before that is when Hugh McGregor on the episode one, the beginning documentary, gets to choose his lightsaber. Kid Fist was in there. <laughs> That's kind of the only thing I can kind of give it as some other time I've seen. I would never be able to point out a lightsaber on a shelf of lightsabers and go, oh, that's Kid Fist was, obviously. It's like, have you been to um, the Noble Collection shop in Covent Garden? It's like the Warner Brothers, essentially. Yes, yeah, yeah. They've got like all the ones. There's like 10 of the main ones, which you know. And then, like, on the wall on the left, it's like, oh, look, it's about dropping Harry Potter characters. It's like, oh, look, it's all of his schoolmates, the ones you've never seen that you wouldn't know. And it's how, like, he was in the background in that film. <laughs> oh, look, it's Nev or Neville there. It's Seamus, Neville. And you're there, like, why do they all have wands? And, you know, the difference of, I guess, a wand is they're 30 quid. These are, like, 180 quid each. Uh, but, yeah, I think they've got them just the last few thing, the last thing, really, in the in toy shelf. Yeah, so... But Funko is back at it again. They have announced their next wave of episode nine merchandise without episode nine being out of cinemas. They have a new, they're calling it not the dark wave, but they've released all six nights of Ren, Dark Ray, C3P with red eyes, 10 inch Kylo Ren, and a double pack of, I think, Dio and BB 8 plus one of Ray and Kylo. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't collect pops anymore. I know you're on a bit of a a timeout from them as such, but I've forgotten how much they really can milk it when they want to. It's a lot to be bringing out. I say, especially before the release of the actual movie, when we don't know how big a, this Ray figure, especially, I mean that if it's a vision, like we suspect it to be, that could be a couple of seconds, a couple of frames in a, in a movie. Yeah. So I think to bring this out, so or maybe that's why it's out so early because the hype's there behind it. And if it is just part of the a, a dream sequence that flies over, you will find that it's um it's all done. So I don't know. I guess you know what they're going to keep pumping these things out. There's no stopping them at all. It, it's going to happen whether we want it to or not, or whether we're collecting them or not. Phil has commented, "I do want the dark side ray." Now, the most interesting thing about that is that she has the light the lightsaber pattern that Kylo has of the kind of um, cracked kyber crystal. Yeah. Um, not to look into it too much. Um, <laughs> that was one obvious thing, but yeah, it's it's one of them where you know these are going to hit the shelves. People go out mad. I remember, I think the best thing that Lego did was with Last Jedi. I think they released everything on Force Friday, and I swear, like on the day of release, they released the Skellig Island 
yes. Luke and Ray because it wasn't a spoiler to release that. That was like a nice surprise of hey, the film's out. Yeah. And then the full wave came in like January, February time, which I'm sure Lego will do again. But with Funko, it's here's five waves in two months, and then in six months time, then you'll get the wave with the spoilers then. I mean, it's, um, it's quite crazy. I think it was a 15 released on Force Friday pops, and yeah. now that Night of Ren is another six, and then Ray. Kind of, kind of yeah, like 20, probably 22 already. Yeah, and, and we haven't seen a frame of the film like to, altogether. We've not seen the actual film play. Mugler's Bounty was Supreme Leader Ren, and it's yeah. him wearing the hoodie. Yeah, um, and there was another Night of Ren. So you're on like 25, maybe now. Yeah. It's it is it is crazy. Get that van. You're right. I have got a lot of pops. I'm still collecting them, but certainly have slowed down from it. I must get them all because if you wait long enough, they become really cheap and able to get them for a lot less in some bargain retail shops around around the country. And they look great on a shelf. They do. They really do. Um. I believe that's everything from Toy Shelf. Yeah, it uh, is. We actually have a bit of games news, um, ironically, for a change. Next Friday, eight days from now, Jedi Fallen Order launches. And last week they released a new launch trailer. It's a minute long. I didn't watch it because I do not need to be sold on any of the story. Um, one of my close friends is now messaging me a lot. He's into his gaming more than he's into Star Wars. And he's saying how like incredible the gameplay looks from everything he's seeing. It's not normal fighting combat. It's like articulated. It looks intelligent. It's about you playing as the character, not just hacking and slashing and yeah. fighting like Star Killer and other stuff. It's fun as it can be, but there's, I don't want to say this, I'm not going to be lying. So there's a lot of attention on it. I think this is a game that's going to, that's within the game. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm a gamer as much, much, but this is getting a lot of talk from the people in the industry now. And I think this is going to be a sleeper hit that a lot of people come to. Yeah. And I can imagine this trailer is going to be attached to every single showing of episode nine in cinemas too. Oh, without a single doubt, you'll get that across the board because why wouldn't they want to push that to all those people who are going to see this, especially over opening weekend, this film's going to be massive. You can get so many eyes on that. And the trailer, it's a really good trailer. Just again, it just gives you a little bit more than we've had before that it just shows you some more of the lightsaber fighting looks incredible. The, the the graphically it looks superb as well i i can't wait to get my hands in this game i don't know about you but i've taken a day off work uh so i can actually sit and play it through uh not the first day unfortunately i couldn't get that time off so it's like the wednesday after it's released so i'll have to sit and just look at it for the first weekend but i can't wait to have a, an actual day to sit and play the game i have next friday booked off work nice. and i have the down i don't normally do like downloadable games like i prefer discs but I get to pre-install it on Tuesday to play a bang on midnight next Friday. I have not done that for a game since Arkham Knight, and I was the first one to finish it. It took like 18 hours. Um, I don't think I'm going to smash out as much. I really want to get this done before the spoilers appear on Twitter. Yeah. I also want to take my time and enjoy it, so I am very excited to get my hands on this. Uh, just Phil is commenting along as well with us. Uh, nice work, guys. Let's see if you can stick the landing. I think that means his closing, but of course I'll, I'll nail that closing. I'm oh, professional. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, as well, game wise, while we're talking Fall Order, I'll, I'll switch them around quickly. There's a new EA Star Wars game in development, and according to their financial predictions, they kind of do like quarterly, you know, what what blocks are there. They've got an entitled Star Wars game that's due before April 2022. I would like to bet a lot of money on this being November 2021 and it being Battlefront 3 on the new consoles. Oh, that would be an excellent call, actually. I think that's a, a nice way of putting it. I think it would be around about that time because you're going to wait for, obviously, this film to finish. It's a still a brand new game, so it's got to develop. But I think Battlefront 3, as long as they don't do what they've done with Battlefront 2, make, it, make Battlefront 2 how it is now, Battlefront 3. Make it like that when you release it. It took them so long to get that game right that I think a lot of interest waned by the time it was was great. I think new consoles gives them a easier yeah. sorry, platform to try on. I think with it being PS5, but like the first PS5, PS5 Star Wars game. Yeah, definitely. Selling point done. So that's a little bit of nice news. I mean, EA, you know, everyone knows they've not done the best of the license. Disney are aware of that. Um, I think Fall Order's make or break. I think if it doesn't work out, I think it will. If it doesn't, I think that license is going to get shared around. I think there'll be a contract that gets ripped up. If not, they'll probably silently say, you know, do a multiplayer game, do a single-player game, just get them both alternating. But it's exciting. Um, really is. 
And then our final bit of games news uh, is Vader Immortal Chapter 3 has been confirmed for a release on the 21st of November, two weeks from today. Yeah, it's. I mean, I've only played Chapter 1, and I will say it is incredible on the Oculus headset, especially the unwired one. I don't know which range it is, but the Oculus way, you just put the head up, headset on, stole the game on a US uh, an SD card with the things in your hand. It is an unreal experience. I've I quite, I can't wait to play this again. If I, had, if I had afford my own Oculus, I'd have it. We for where... have some breaking news. Oh, breaking news. Okay. That's available in the United Kingdom on March the 31st. March the 31st, 2020. Disney Plus. Look at that. We'll have missed the series we want to see, but hey. <laughs> I'm Is really that... annoyed. Uh, that's genuinely just been announced officially on Disney Plus, Facebook, and Twitter. Anybody that's watching visually, they have the official statements now out. They've also put with this more to, well, United Kingdom, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and more territories to be announced soon. Please note titles will vary by territory. Oh, there's a, there's a warning that stuff's not coming. There's a like, oh, you wanted the Avengers that we said are all on the American Disney? Well, Sky Movies still have the rights. <laughs> um, I don't care. I just want, I want Tron Uprising. I want even Stevens and new content. I'm still going to fly to America to watch it next week. Oh, I can't wait. I can't, I can't wait. It's just, we will. I can't wait. The plane try the plane is going to be excellent for getting over there. It really is. But no, that's a nice little bit of break. We haven't a break in East for a while. That's a nice. We haven't. Break. No, it's nice to get something actual breaking. Yeah. To end, I could say we began with us moaning about a rumored release date. Guess yeah, what? and then, then we have it. Yeah. Brilliant. By the end of the show, we actually have the release date. Amazing. So, yes, um, we're watching it next week. I think we're going to miss a little bit of Clone Wars. Then I think was it February they were. Really yeah, I think it's February, so we will miss probably the first couple of episodes of that by the time we get it. But um, no, very, very exciting. It really is. And with that, really, we are done with this week's episode of Ones with a Force, a Star Wars podcast. A massive thank you again to everyone who's making this channel and helping it grow. It really does mean the world to us that the channel is getting bigger. We're getting more views and more likes. So thank you very much for being part of the channel. So all that leaves me to do is to close this out to say, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We are available on YouTube when we are always on YouTube. All our videos previously, go and check out anything that we've done for the last two years. It's amazing stuff. You can always follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and you will hear this audio on Stitcher. Oh, I messed up towards the end. Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, and uh, Podbean. So please, we've been ones of the force. With the force, we'll be with you. Sorry, Phil, I messed that up. Good night.